We are CEOs, executives, educators, and professionals from all sectors of society who support the global expansion of betterment in the world through joy and joyly. I'm your host, Cheryl Lynn, founder of the Chair of Joy Experience. Together, we have developed the World Council of Joy, and our council invites CEOs and innovators from impactful organizations to the Joyly podcast. We showcase how generous, bold, and fully engaged they are in their work and what a culture of joy is to them. Good day, everyone. Cheryl Lynn here. We are in the live broadcast studio of Joyly Studios with another amazing guest, another CEO. Her name is Jessica Stroud. Jessica, you are an author today, so we're going to hear a lot about that. Um, before, but before we get going, why don't you just say hello and uh, tell me where in the world you are and uh, you know a little bit about what you're up to in life, and then we'll get into more details in a little bit. Hello, everyone. I'm Jessica Stroud. I live in Kansas City, so right in the middle of all of the fun United States. My husband and I have two sons, and we have um, an insurance business here in Kansas City that we have nothing too exciting, just like auto and home insurance, all that, all that necessary evil that everybody needs to, to keep themselves legal when you're driving and keep your mortgage companies happy. But I've lived in the Midwest most of my life but we love to travel and explore now that we're able to do that. Awesome. So in the Midwest, Kansas City, I'm in Wisconsin right now. So I'm super excited about the fact that the grass is green and uh, we are seeing animals and wildlife and, and things look like they're coming alive. So even flying on an airplane tomorrow. Ooh, so, exciting. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, we've got a lot to talk about in a very short time. So I want to make sure that I ask all the questions that I can uh, get to it as quickly as possible. So we're going to get started right away. So Miss Jessica, I just want to ask you broadly in your leadership and in your understanding of your level as a leader in a CEO role, would you say, um, what would you say are the top three characteristics of your role? Who are you to be a successful human being? To be a successful human being, I have to be an example. Mm -hmm. So I, I just had a, a situation the other day where I felt, felt myself, you know, felt, felt the, the anger and the anxiety bubbling. And I had to stop myself and say, what are you scared of? Right. Cause that's where all that comes from. And for me, it's not about my, my brand or my influence, whatever you want to call it. It's more about being an example. So to be a successful leader, I have to be, I have to have an example. I have to be an example. I have to be an implementer. Because if I'm just going to talk and talk and talk and not do anything, why is anybody going to, to do what I say? Or why are they going to look to me for answers or for example? Is that word again? And the third thing that I have to do or be in order to be a leader is I have to be compassionate. We never know what other people are going through. When somebody comes to us for advice or somebody is working in our company, I don't know what they're going through. So I need to make sure that I am being compassionate knowing that I don't know everybody's story. That is absolutely brilliant. And um, how many staff do you have working with you right now? Um, three, we have three people that work for us. Very cool. And I'm sure you've um, hired and brought on new people over the years and probably in and out through COVID. So there's a lot of change going on. Um, <clears throat> so. What I'm hearing you say is that you have a kind of unique approach to your own problem solving as a CEO. And um, I wanted to see if by any chance I could just run real quick at the beginning of our interview, this chair of joy exercise. So we kind of have that as reference. Okay. Um, would, would you mind? Sure. All right. So just basically the chair of joy is um, a transformational uh, process practice based on neuroscience. And so here's what it's really fun and simple. So. Okay something I've been doing for 20 years and I just really formulated it. Because I need simple, all right? We're not talking to rocket science here. I need simple. <laughs> ah, you're my girl. <laughs> all right, feet on the floor, super easy. Take a deep breath. Just get present with me. We all have busy days. We've got a new book coming out today. So exciting. All right, one more deep breath. In for four. And I want you to tap into one of your most joyful memories. Whatever age you were, young, yesterday, you know, whatever comes to mind first, it could be as easy as wind on your face, anything that comes to mind and see if you can hone in on that one moment of joy and share it with me a couple sentences whenever you're ready. Mm, that's a challenge. 
to find it's one. A it's a challenge for me when you say, tell me about your most joyful experience. In my opinion, my humble opinion, I live the best life I could ever live. And so when you say what's your most recent joyful, I'm thinking about last night when I went on a walk with my 11 year old mm -hmm. and he is working at becoming better at conversation, which I think all of us can be better at conversation. And I shared with him people's most favorite topic is themselves. So in order to be better at conversation, you need to ask people about themselves and just to, to watch his realization around that was, was pretty incredible. Oh, special. What's his first name? His name is Luke. Luke. How beautiful. Yeah. And he can be a little, um, we'll say socially challenged. <laughs> he does not aware of other people. He does not care about other people, which as most of us moms know, will be incredible when he gets older. But right now he just, he, we're trying to help him be a little more aware of other people. Well, he's 11 year old boy. So yeah, yeah. But just, wa just walking with him in our neighborhood, we went for a 30 minute walk, but you know, I could list 10 more over the last yesterday. I got to host 20 women out of a business group um, for lunch. And I remember standing in the kitchen and just the conversation and the connection and the laughter that filled this place, it, it about brought me to tears because I could just feel the ladies connecting and working together and transferring energy. It was just amazing. So it's hard for me. I could be, I, we could talk for hours about how, all these great things I have. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing the, the, the idea of the women being there too, but we're going to skip over that one, even though that one is so profound, because I just want you to take the deep breath in and do it one more time. And um, I, you can't use those two. So you got to think of, an, of another one. So the idea is, is to let your brain just come up with whatever best case scenario it can, and, and you're doing great. So one more time, deep breath in and see if you can go to one other moment really the details of the moment, the day, the event, the food, the person there, and uh, what what was the moment of, of joy that you just tapped into? Searching, there's nothing that's just popping into my mind. Okay. I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm trying to formulate it, like when my kid was born or <laughs> <laughs> when I got married, or I, I think I'm, I'm trying too hard, I think is what's Oops. happening. Well, that's okay, let's do it again, because I, I think that this is the work, right? This is this is this, the essence that joy is inside of us and it's not outside and then we don't have to spend any money on it. It's already there. Okay, I know what, what it is. I okay. know what it is. I know what it is. Okay. I got it. Let's hear it. I got it. So um, I'm 42 and a couple of years ago, I decided that I was going to start running. And last year, right in the middle of everything that we're all going through, I decided to, with two weeks advance notice, to run a half marathon. And the furthest I'd ever gone was four miles. And a half marathon is over 13 miles. And one of the most joyous experiences that I had that actually brought me to tears was towards the end, it wasn't at the end yet, but towards the end, it was between mile 12 and mile 13, I actually started crying because I I was telling my self-talk inside was, you're doing it, like you are absolutely doing this. And I was so proud of myself in that moment that I never, I finished just, just like three hours and two minutes, just, I finished just, and I just remember thinking to myself, you never stopped moving your feet. You never stopped. And I just was just thinking about it now. I actually drove down that street last week and it almost brought me to tears. But just being so proud of myself that I set the goal, that I accomplished the goal. And I hurt when I was done. But oh man, I'm going to cry right now just thinking about it. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you took a moment to kind of regroup and get to the thing that gives you joy because that's the work. And congratulations on first the finishing the, mar the half marathon and 
and um, and celebrating it. I think that's cool. So here's the, here's the next piece, and I'm going to ask you because you're already a coach. You already can move with me through this very quickly. So okay. the two memories: your son walking Luke outside with you under the stars, and I'm assuming it was under the stars. I don't know that for sure. <laughs> it wasn't at night, but that's fine. Right. The okay. stars were there somewhere. <laughs> okay, so Luke and you were walking in the neighborhood, and then the other one was you on your 12th and a half mile crossing, almost crossing the finish line when you were like, dang, I got this. Can you come up with one word to connect those two memories? Mm -hmm. This is always a little more complicated, but it's really the one word that I'm looking for you to settle in on. Accomplishment. Got it. Awesome. So it, it, I just want to explain this to our audience for those that are listening, because I know you're following me. The two memories are uh, are um, raising your vibration, right? We don't often stop to take time and just let our vibration raise up during the day because we're always so working toward getting it done. So that's one thing is raising up the vibration. I ask people to do this neuroscientific behavior three times a day, because what happens if everyone in the universe is raising up their vibration three times a day by simply recalling memories of things that give you joy. And then for you, you found a connecting word. So you made you made the uh, the concept much clearer. So I always say is accomplishment joy and joy is accomplishment for you. Do you feel like that's true? I do. My husband will ask me, did you have a good day today? And the way I answer that is how much did I accomplish? Not necessarily what did I get done, but what did I accomplish today? And accomplishing this race was just as incredible as accomplishing this conversation and passing this idea and this concept to my son that he will now carry on to help him become better at conversation. I love that. All right, we're going to finish this in a little bit. But before we do that, I want to hear about your book. And if you don't mind sharing it and showing it, um, I didn't have a chance to read it. It just came out today, but I please tell us. All right. So the book is called The Lady CEO from the Corner of Poverty and Dysfunction to the Lady CEO. The premise around the book is so many times we say to ourselves, if I could go back and change this, or I wish this wouldn't have happened, or I wish I wouldn't have had to have gone through that. Like what, or I love when people say, if you go back in the last 10 years and change absolutely everything. And the, the, the feeling around the book is if I could go back and change anything, I would change nothing because everything that brought me here, everything that I went through, Everything that I, where I stumbled and where I failed and where I, you know, the, I didn't have good examples of parents. That's for sure. They were, they did not have joy, but I had to go through all of that to be where I'm at, to have the team I have, to have the company I have, to have the relationships that I have, to have the children, the marriage, all that. I had to go through that to get here. All of that, like the river running through shaped me and all of that as who I am. And so you can't change any of it. So then I just go through some of the things that I experienced and some of the mess ups and all of that and extract lessons from them, very encouraging lessons, and then translate that into how um, other people can use those examples to become the CEO of their lives. So you are drawing on, it sounds like a lot of your coaching experience for this uh, book. Is Was that kind of the the thing that got you to decide, well, I need to write a book because this is a message people need to hear or are ready for, or I'm just kind of curious how the book got out of your head and onto paper. What was the catalyst? I think so too often we look back at our failures with shame and that just kills me. The shame that so many people carry with them, some of them for things that they didn't even do, like things that their parents did or the way they grew up or whatever. And the, the, the mistakes that we made, I believe that at each level in our lives, there's a lesson that has to be learned. And if we don't learn the lesson, we're not going on to the next level. It's, I believe life's like a video game. You go from level to level and you learn something at every level that takes you to the next level. You're going to need this skill to go on. And I just, I wanted people to look at me and I don't necessarily have any secrets. I'm kind of an open book, right? Clearly I just put it all on paper. But to look at me and go, oh yeah, she messed up. Oh yeah, she failed. Oh yeah, her life, she wasn't perfect. 
And that's okay because here's the things we learned from it. It's not a failure if you learn something. And I, I feel almost cliche saying that, but it's the truth. And I know that when I put my stuff out there and I extract lessons and I share, I'm giving other people permission to put their stuff out there and to look at their failures a little differently and to go back and go, yeah, that sucked. That was terrible and embarrassing. I wish I wouldn't have done that, but what's the lesson in that? What can I take from that? And then like you're saying with the neural pathways, you're changing the way you feel about the experience. You're changing your energy around the experience. Cause now I can laugh at stuff and go, ha ha ha, that was so ridiculous. What was the lesson? And it's not a feeling of shame anymore. It's not a negative energy vibration. It's a positive energy vibration because I, I changed how I thought about it. So I know the book just came out, but has there been any success stories about it? Anyone who said that was that that helped that helped or even oh, yeah. just my my friend, uh, my friend. OK, so I was very vulnerable and I sent a copy to my friend, Jessica, who is a, a lawyer in New York City. And I said, all right, like you're the only one. You're the first one. And then she, I was like, what do you think? Like, give it to me. She goes, I absolutely loved it. She did make a few suggestions, right? I was open to feedback. I always am. And so I, I made a few final edits, but she just said, I never thought of this. I never thought of that. That's exactly how I feel about that. One of the things that I talk about is as a society, we can be boring, right? We can, you and I come together and we have a great conversation, but sometimes you run into somebody and it's, Hey, how are you? Great. How are you? That's, that's not the vibration of connection that we want, right? It's, Hey, how are you? Great. I have this new recipe that I'm trying. I failed miserably. It's so funny. I'm going to keep trying. What are you trying new? What are you and to have experiences and to be more interesting. And yeah. so that's the one that she really liked was the, the chapter that was on uh, be, being a more interesting person. <laughs> Well, it feels like uh, it feels like just by your waking up in the morning, you are that example, right? And so I try to be absolutely try to be. I'm sure that is shining through in the book. That's really incredible. One of the things that I talk to CEOs about and and our clients is that when you're making decisions from joy or from this place of exuberance that you're talking about or this light, that the, oftentimes the results can produce higher and faster and more increased KPIs. So talk to me a little bit about that. Like, how do you think, or what would you say to CEOs about, you know, first get to this place of joy or this place of, of light before you can, because what happens if you don't? Like it, it's, you know, talk to me about that. So when I am feeling joy, one of the things that I personally struggle with is patience. I don't have a lot of patience, right? <laughs> patience with our kids, patience at the grocery store, patience with when we're creating a new product or service. I don't have a lot of patience. And when we can put ourselves, when I can put myself in a joyful state, then my pay, my I bring it down, bring it down a level where I'm not um, as anxious and I can be more joyful in the process. One of the, the ways that, I think CEOs can help change their life and become more joyful. One of the things that has helped me for many years is we need to keep perspective. When I am feeling not in a good energy and I'm not vibrating where I need to be, I have to stop myself and say, hey, listen, you woke up this morning. Your husband woke up this morning. Your kids woke up this morning. Your dogs woke up this morning. Some people don't have that. And I can be a little ridiculous. I'm not there. I can get in my head and get all tantrum me. I don't let it out, right? But then I do. Did your husband wake up? Did your kids wake up? Did you, did you, do you have running water to brush your teeth? So sometimes we get so wrapped up. And I'm not saying that other people's, I'm not saying that what you're going through is not um, important. And I'm not saying, oh, other people have way more problems than you do get over. It's not about that. But it's just stopping and for me on the regular like you said, changing the vibration of my energy and just finding something to be so grateful for. Guess what? I have water to brush my teeth this morning. Yeah. That I'm, I have food in the refrigerator. Come on now. How bad do we really have it? How bad yeah. do we really have it? So perspective is, and that, that's when, when we hire for our company or I, I take on new clients, I want to know what your perspective is. I would, do you think that it's doom and gloom and that the world is a terrible place or are you like, yeah, I've made some missteps, but 
I'm just a happy person. I believe joy and happiness is a, you can learn to do that. I believe it's something you learn and that you can create. I don't believe you're either born happy or not born happy. I don't buy into that. It's a daily, it's a daily objective. Like it has to be. Um, joy is uh, this book, 365 Days to Longevity. Dr. Paul Abel spent, he's 74 now, but he spent his lifetime learning what is the key to longevity. And after all his research and 45 years as a healing uh, medical doctor in downtown Beverly Hills, the answer he came to was joy. And so he wrote this whole book. I'm going to flip through this and pick a quote for us because oh. everybody has a quote. I'm just curious what ours is. Ta -da, ta -da, okay. ta -da. Number 107, joy is offering a supportive word to someone in serious crisis who is crippled with worry and self-doubt. That sounds like what your whole book is about. It fits, it absolutely fits, that's right. If I could do one thing, right? If I won the lottery or whatever, I did kind of win the lottery, like the life lottery, I did, right? So if I could go around and do something all day long and not worry about getting paid for it, I, I would figure out how to show people just how incredible they are. Just mm -hmm. what a shining light. I would follow them around like an obnoxious cheerleader with pom-poms and be like, you're the best, you're the best, you're so smart, right? So many people don't have, I don't know about what, when you grew up, but I didn't have parents who told me, Jess, you are brilliant. You're, you're so smart. You can do anything. You're beautiful. You're talented. We didn't, I, I didn't have people pouring that into me. And I, so few people have that positive, the people who can be positive. And so we have to do that for ourselves. But I would follow people around and be an obnoxious cheerleader. Yes, I would. I love that. I feel like exactly <laughs> the same way, sister. I don't have any sisters. So I that's something that I say all the time. And the, this whole chair of joy thing is I do follow people around and I do put the chair in boardrooms oh. and and decks and garages and wherever I can get people to sit down and go through the transformation and realize that they're so joyful. They just forgot or they forgot to take the time. Their power. They forget their power. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to finish this little process now, now that you have the word accomplishment, which joy is accomplishment, accomplishment is joy. Um, my, before we move further, I want to know where in your house is your chair of joy, by the way, if you were to pick one real little special little fun place that you could sit and get away from it all, where would that be? Have you ever dropped your phone on the floor, on your face, or in some other embarrassing place? Don't you wish there was something you could attach to your phone case that would help you hold your phone so you don't have to, or at least as much? Introducing Steady Straps, a comfortable, adjustable, strong, elastic strap with 100% Velcro brand closures that helps you hold your phone more securely without dropping it and use it easier and faster, especially one-handed. It's the only smartphone grip accessory without adhesives, and it's 100% wireless charging ready without having to remove or adjust it first. Check us out at SteadyStraps.com and order some today. My chair of joy is actually in the hearth room downstairs in the kitchen okay and it, it but it doesn't necessarily get me away from everyone because i'm still in this space now someday i will sometimes i'm like get away from me everything is so loud i need a break right but this chair is where i sit in the morning and i drink my coffee and there's just space for my little dog right next to me and i can hear my boys getting ready for school I can hear the house waking up. I can hear things happening. I can hear the chatter as they start to greet each other in the hall and see each other. You know, I can hear my husband getting up and moving around. And it's just a place that every morning I go from this quiet solitude into my people are starting their day. I love that. I love that. Just waking up. And if I, if I, if I were, if you and I were just talking it, having, you know, a glass of wine, I would say that the stress, the worry, the chaos, the impatient, the fear, the doubt, all of those things, even happy sometimes, happy will take away, happy is kind of fleeting, right? It kind of comes and goes because something that makes us happy might break or might go away, but joy is self-sustaining and it's always in us. So I would say to you, you know, Jessica, could you go to your chair of joy three times a day, kind of get ahead and interrupt some of those things that are coming at you. And lots of times CEOs need to remove themselves from, from the computer and, and go tap into those things. So here we go. While we do that, we're going to, did you want to say something about that? Go ahead. Well, one of, since we're talking about my book, one of the chapters in my book is, do you have multiple personalities? 
And you just said your joy can go away. And we get so, sometimes we only allow ourselves to have one identity. I'm either a mom or I'm a wife or I'm a CEO or I'm a leader. And what if it all goes away? And so I'm very careful and I encourage my people have multiple identities, right? I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a business owner. I'm a leader. I'm a runner. But if I break my leg and I can't run, I did. I tore up my foot and I couldn't run for a while. That that doesn't take away about all of my joy because I still have joy in other parts of, of I, in my other buckets is what I say. Like if we've been married for almost 17 years, but what if he wakes up one day and decides that being my husband doesn't bring him joy? That would be terrible. And I would need to get find joy in the other buckets of my life. So just exactly what you said, your joy can go away. You have to make sure that you're, you're being selfish and bringing in several things that bring you joy. Like my right. little dog, my little dog brings me joy. <laughs> right. Like, like who else is going to do that for us? So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you as a teacher, as a leader, as a coach to, to take me, uh, take this a little bit further. So you have your word accomplishment. It was the, the sense of the two memories that you had, um, the running and your son walking. And I want you to see if you can just put it in a container, something that you can actually hold this um, accomplishment because we're going to walk with it. What would you, what would that look like? Be Use your creativity here, your right brain. Can I put it in a container? Yeah. Yeah. I can put it in a container. Do you want to know what the container looks like and what it has in it? Yes. It's clear. It's a clear glass container. It's mm. very simple and elegant. And I joke that I, I run races for the bling, right? For the medals, right? I love a good race medal. So in that container of joy, I would have the medal that I got. I really have the medal that I got for my half marathon. And then my son wears these shoes and the laces are always coming untied when we're on our walks and it's fine. We joke about it now. I would take those laces from his shoes and I would put them in my container of joy because it would make me laugh and it would remind me the laces only come untied when we're walking together. And that would constantly remind me of the laughing and joking because they keep coming untied. <laughs> That's perfect. So let's take this bottle, this clear glass bottle with the laces and the, what was the other thing? The, the um, metal, the running metal. The race metal. The bling. And so what we just did is we took your accomplishment that was intangible, your joy that was intangible and made it tangible. So now you've actually got something physical. Sometimes people even make this thing that we just talked about, that maybe it's as an emblem on your mantle or something or on your desk. But anyway, we're now, you and I are going into LaGuardia Airport and we're getting ready to fly off, you know, and we're going to land, you know, in Florida, let's say, and we're getting off the plane and there are 3000 CEOs, all your peers, you know, executives from all over, and they don't get what's in your little glass bottle. They don't understand accomplishment and joy like you do. Right. And so I would love for you to speak to them. What do they absolutely need to know from you about this, this uh, level of joy that you're experiencing and how it affects your work? I would say to all 3000 of them, tell me, how you make a living, show me how you make a life. I don't wanna know what your job is. I don't wanna know how you pay your bills. I wanna know how you create a life that you can't wait to start every day. I'm not saying I roll out of bed super happy, like coffee gets me up, coffee gets me through to like 10 o'clock, right? And then the happy kicks in. But too often we're worried about, so to, over the next probably week, I will have the joy of adding best-selling author to my life resume. And so often we are, like I got to add half marathon runner to my life resume. So often we are, we want to talk about our, our work resume, but what about the rest of it? Like what about the rest of it? Cause that work's going to go away at some point. There's this thing called retirement. And I know that it's changing the definition and all that is changing as we evolve as a country, but we say to each other, what do you, in the United States, we say to each other, what do you do for a living? Because our identities are so tied up in what we do for work, but where else can you be the CEO of? Not just your company. I want to know where, how else can you be a CEO in your life? I think that would uh, spend the, send them off spinning somewhat and um, hopefully uh, really dig deep to find the answer to that because that is an absolute brilliant question. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Um, my last question is, um, we believe that uh, that um, 
the conversation that we're having today, if we were to raise the vibration uh, of, let's say, your community and maybe your state and my state, and, and we could all kind of get into this increased level of joy as a vibration, what do you think our global, um, how would that impact our global uh, betterment? So in the energy and the vibration that so many people are living in now, it's me, 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 right? We look at the politics, we look at the news, we look at it's me, 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 me. Yeah. We're a very inside focused country. I don't travel abroad a lot, so I'm not trying to talk about that, but me, me, me. And if we just... So one of how we built, how I built my insurance company, it was, how can I serve you? What can I help you with? How can I, how can I help you with something? Right. It was very outwardly. I didn't walk around. Hey, can I quote your auto and home insurance? That wasn't going to happen, but I had to say, how can I serve you? Here's what I do for money, right? You're going to find that out later, but how can I serve you and how can I help you? And what are your dreams? And where I help them raise their vibration and I help serve them. I help them get what they want. And then it ultimately comes around. So if we can just get more people thinking about how can I serve others? And I'm not necessarily talking about charities or philanthropy, which would be absolutely incredible, but people in those spaces are usually outwardly focused. I'm talking about the everyday the people who are stepping on the train, the people who are in the grocery store, can you hold the door open for somebody? Like we, this one thing that masks are, are challenging me to use my voice, literally. I'm a big smiler, right? I smile at everybody, but now I'm having to use my voice. I'm having to say, hi, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Thank you. I don't just smile to say thank you anymore. I'm using my voice. And if we could just do, if we could just look at others and say, how can I help you? How can I serve someone else? Because I think actually, here's a little secret. Everybody lean in real close. When you serve others, you feel so good about it. So it's actually kind of a selfish thing. It actually makes you feel so good. And that's why I think that we could just, we could just rock it out. It can be amazing. It could be amazing. I think it is being amazing. I think people are really enlightened. There's a lot of transformation going on. I think COVID really helped us kind of look at, at what's important. And I know conversations like we're having today are happening all over the globe. And um, I just think it's a matter of collaborating. And, and part of the podcast here is to bring people like us together, you know, so we can continue to create good content for those that are like, what does this really work? Is that something that's really important? And how does joy get to the front burner? And, and can it even happen for me because my life is so crazy and chaotic? So I think you truly said <laughs> that it does. So uh, I don't have much else unless you have a, a whole bunch of things you would like to add. But my last two questions are, what's your biggest takeaway? from our experience today, because we had a wonderful experience. I think I learned a lot about you in a very short time and I look forward to hopefully connecting again. So what was your biggest takeaway? And then any last comments or any way that our audience can support you, please let me know. So the, the biggest takeaway is the, of although it was a struggle for a few minutes, right? It was just a few minutes and you're like, nope, Jessica, keep trying, keep trying. You got me to something impactful very quickly mm. and then you said now what if you did that several times a day <laughs> what if i did go downstairs and sit in my red chair and just think about how ha had that feeling of, of accomplishment and that feeling of the the innocent chitter chatter with my son so that was pretty incredible i do just have one thing that i would i would like to share with everyone we have to stop waiting for other people to create our joy. If you want to go and do something, if you want to go to try a new restaurant, if you want to go to a movie, if you want to go to a museum, if you want to go to a park, make the plan. For sure, invite other people to go with you because everyone likes to be invited to do something, but you have to be willing to go and do it on your own. You are in charge of your joy. You can't wait for other people to create or bring the joy to you. You have to manufacture it yourself. Absolutely. And first, I just want to say thank you for saying the red chair. That gave me a lot of joy. Just seeing you and thinking about you going to that chair three times a day. That's incredible. And I just want to add to that, you know, um, a little bit more conversation about that, that 
the chair of joy doesn't have to be this thing. It's a, it's as much as about this as it isn't about this. Like it's the park in the in the or the park bench and the in, you know or the the log in the woods or the recliner downstairs. You know whatever that is. And and just knowing that it's that it's free and available to anyone, anytime, anywhere, um, just like it is for you. And 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 then then, wow, that we can even start like you said, looking in the eyes and speaking it. I haven't even thought about that, that I don't use my voice when I've got the mask on. It yeah. never crossed my mind to be able to go and look and sound off about joy to other people. You know, even now, yeah. hey, that's a really cool jacket. Or so, I don't I do not do Botox, so I got these little lines right here. And so I can look a little angry sometimes, right? Like so many of us have these little lines in between our eyebrows. I look at, so even if I have a mask on, I have a big smile. I could still be looking a little angry if you can't see. <laughs> but my voice certainly doesn't sound angry. <laughs> You're beautiful. And I love Thank your you. Life. I love you laugh. Well, I'm going to let you have the last word again, because I'm sorry, I had to interrupt there about your red chair. Anything else you want to add? Like, where can we get your book and how can we support you? So I am super easy to find. I'm very easy to connect with you. I need to take a page out of your book and become much better on LinkedIn. But for right now, you can find me on Instagram at Jessica Stroud, the lady CEO, or on Facebook. I'm very active on Facebook. I love Facebook. And Jessica Stroud, it's my picture. I'm wearing something pink. And, um, and then the book is on Amazon. It's called The Lady CEO, From the Corner of Poverty and Dysfunction to The Lady CEO. Uh, the, it's, I, you don't write, I didn't write a book to make a profit. I wrote a book to encourage people. So they, the paper copy is $5.99, the, the, the Kindle copy is 99 cents. So even if you're on a budget, you can still get the book for a very low price. That's beautiful. And I just want to do a, a plug for my uh, my sponsor. This is uh, Joy Lee. Uh, if you can see the, the band on the back, you put it on the back of your iPhone and it's so, like I've stopped this, my phone from dropping in the fireplace. It's so cool. Plus, if you put it on your phone, it reminds you to sit in your chair three times a day. So those are like, I don't know, 15 bucks on my site or something. So love for everyone to get one of those. So just to wrap up, uh, Jessica Stroud, I will be putting the links down below for everyone to come and look for you and find your amazingness. I know you're a coach and people can sign up for that as well. Um, hopefully, I'm not sure if that's on your website, but I'm sure you can talk to them about that. Absolutely. And then last, I just want to say that um, we are grateful to have this opportunity to continue showing people that the chair of joy and uh, other methods that um, Jessica are using just to wear your happy shirt and talk to people through your mask and all of those kinds of things are really transforming scarcity into abundance. We're exploring boundless solutions and we're moving from thriving, from surviving to thriving together. So again, I'm grateful to my guest, Jessica Stroud today for being with us. Thank you so very much. Thank you. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.